Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 250, figure it out, of the uh, 253, thanks Rosie, of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm uh, hugely excited to say that I am finally home. I'm in Melbourne. I have left Tasmania. I left uh, as a, I had to, a bit of a family emergency. Everything's fine. It's all good. But I had to come home. Uh, my people called me and I responded. Um, but how good would it have been if I was like, nah, fuck you. I'm going to stay in my rat infested house instead. You know, that would have been, that would have been pretty awful of me to do, but I'm, I'm home. I'm finally in my house and, uh, it's good. feels good, man, to be home. Feels good to see all my family and finally to be out of that shithole Tasmania, which I never liked. And I said that many times on this show. Uh, I think that uh, something that's always said about me is that I am the world's most consistent comedian. Definitely not with content. No one's ever said that about my content. This is the world's most inconsistent podcast, but the views held on this show are very consistent. I always said that I didn't like Tasmania. I always said that I never wanted to be there. I always have said that I'm a mainlander through and through. And any people trying to tell you that... I'm Tasmanian, uh, I've abandoned the mainland, I always dislike Victoria. That's just wrong, okay? I, I am actually legally obliged to tell you all that Melbourne is the best city in the world, the most livable city, and Dictator Dan, who's just off camera holding a gun to my head, has never made a mistake. Uh, and is the greatest leader of all time. And I, th- I, quite frankly, I think he should be prime minister. And then sh- we should we should leave um, we should leave England, become our own nation. He should become president. And then I think we should invade New Zealand. Um, and I think that's where the future of the country should go. And I think that's what what everyone deserves is is a world under Dan. Um, so I'm, I'm back. Uh, I want to thank all of the, the people in Tasmania for being so hospitable. Apart from that one lady who was really nice to me until she found out that I lived in Battery Point, uh, which apparently was, was the, the rich, wanky suburb. I couldn't tell because of all of the rats. You know, I did actually go go for a walk around that area that I was that I was in, uh, and I when all these people in Tasmania told me that I lived in a rich area, I literally didn't know because the house that we lived in was so shit. Literally, it's going to be the only shit house in that suburb because I walked around and yeah, they're right. That's the Illuminati suburb. I went for a walk and I was looking at hotels and then realizing they were actually houses. I'm like, oh man, look at this castle. That must be a tourist attraction. No, it's not. I saw the gates. I saw the security. I saw the cameras. That is uh, very anti-tourist. In fact, that is very that that house like really screamed white Australia to me. That's what that house screamed. You know, you're in a bit of a racist place when when the the sign, the biggest sign that they have in the city is like the date that it was founded, 1833, and they're real proud of it, and they have a bunch of. Uh, the biggest, the biggest statue they had. I actually thought this was a little bit fucked. The biggest statue they had around my area was a, a massive statue commemorating all of the times that that people almost discovered Australia. There was like, oh, remember that time when uh, the I think it was like Swedish people came here and all these other different European countries came to Australia, came to Tasmania, looked at it, and was like, oh, that's fucked. No one should ever live here. And then they left. And then it was finally discovered by England. They had a, a like a timeline of all the times that Australia was discovered. Uh, zero mention of Aboriginals at all. Not even like, oh, but by the way, people lived here. It was just completely ignored. <laughs> so I'm happy to be home in the least racist place in the world, and that is Frankston. All right. <laughs> the greatest, the greatest city in the world, Frankston. And I am such a believer in how good Frankston is. Guess what? I own a piece of it. I'm a homeowner in Frankston. Don't get too excited. It is a cardboard box. It cost me $2, but I'm very happy to happy to be here. No, I, I'm, dude, I'm stoked to be in my house that I own. It's very weird though, because I'm all excited about being in a new house that I own, but the people, you know, Jazz and my son, they've been living here for months and they're completely over it. Uh, and I'm just walking around. I'm, I'm walking around going, dude, I own the toilet. You ever think about that? The toilet that, you know, statistically most of you guys poo in, it's not yours. You're shitting in someone else's toilet. I always felt disrespected by that. I feel like when you get a rental, they should give you a new toilet. 
You know, I want to. I reckon you sh- you should be able to at least bring your own toilet in at every new rental. It, yes, it's a hassle, but think about how many people have pooed on that toilet. You know, I mean, personally, I obviously obviously I bought this house from someone else, so that toilet has copped a few poos. But the point is, now it's mine. All I own that toilet and the the all of the memories of the poos that it's received. I own all of them. And I think that at any moment I can I can upgrade. Dude, I was thinking about this. I get one of those fancy Japanese toilets that recognize your rim. You know, you can get them. iPhone has face detection. Those Japanese toilets have rim detection. We all have a unique rim. I want a toilet that that goes that that looks at my asshole and goes, "Welcome, king." I want I want a toilet that goes, "Welcome." Yes, please. And then, and then it washes my ass for me. That's what I want. And I can do that because I own the house. I can do whatever I want. I've started thinking about this. I mean, let's be honest. In the rental that I did own, I was doing whatever the fuck I wanted anyway. I was drilling holes in the wall. And, you know, a lot of people, I, I, when I talked about drilling holes in the wall to install industrial studio lighting, I drilled about four to six, like, seven-inch long holes in the brick wall so that I could hang up like a giant studio light to film this podcast at my rental. And everyone yelled at me. They're like, what are you doing? You're going to lose your deposit. You're going to get evicted. I was even told not to talk about this publicly, but I was very open with the damage that I caused to my rental property. And you know what happened as soon as we moved out? Got the deposit back. So I absolutely no consequences, zero lessons learned. And I highly encourage you right now, if you listen to this podcast, you think about you know what, you're in a rental. Why don't you just put a hole in the wall for fun? Hang up that poster, get that dog, adopt that dog that has PTSD and is going to chew the door. Get it. You know, eat the rich. We should eat all landlords other than me. Of course, I really want to be one of those, um, what I what I really see in my future is becoming one of those rich celebrities that pretends to be poor. That's what I want to do, you know, because for my whole career, for my whole life, I've been broke pretending to have money. I want to flip it the other way around. I want to be, uh, I want to own apartment buildings and then walk around in Kmart clothes and complain about landlords and go, oh yeah, I'm with you. I'm an ally. You know, I want to be one of, I want to be like the male feminist of uh of communists you know like a male feminist is walking around going oh i believe in equality with women so much and yeah i can drive you home and then he strikes that's what i'm gonna be i'm gonna be the wealthy uh class conscious guy and i'm gonna i'm I'm gonna go all go to all the conferences and i'm even gonna stand up i'm gonna be the figurehead of the nation and i'm gonna go i reckon that anyone who owns property should be executed and then they're going to go, can we have a look at your files? And then I'm going to pull out a gun and say, stay the fuck away from my, <laughs> from my titles and deeds, you dirty peasants. Um, no, it's really cool, man. I'm, I'm just uh, walking around the house just like losing my mind. I'm like, fuck, I own that wall. That's cool. I can get a dog. I've been thinking about getting a dog. I don't know what type of dog though. And I don't, I don't know. I've always been a rescue type guy but now i have a son and two cats and one of the cats is an absolute cunt just the worst person ever just i get home i've been away for three months everyone's excited to see me you know jazz is crying one of the cats is stoked and then this bitch who hasn't seen me for three months and also has never had a negative experience she acts like i've like i fucked her that's how she acts she acts like i had sex with it I didn't, I didn't, I barely touch it. She doesn't want to be touched. She's a little cunt. I'm never mean to that cat, but for some reason, whenever it sees me, she's the worst person on earth. I come home after three months away. She's living in my house. And she treats me like I just hit her immediately as soon as I get home, right? And it's especially frustrating for me to to experience that and then watch that shit cat treat Rosie like she's the best person she's ever met, which is particularly fucked because Rosie's allergic to cats. So she doesn't want anything to do with the cat. I'm over there looking at the cat going, why don't you be nice to me? I'll be nice. I am nice. I feed her every morning. I give her rubs. 
Sometimes I'll do cat yoga. I'll pick her up and she'll do a big stretch. I do everything for this bitch. And the only person she wants to hang out with is the girl who wants nothing to do with her. She's chasing after women she can't have. What is she? A 17-year-old boy? She's not interested. No means no. Shit cat. The only thing that Rosie has done to that cat is sneeze on it. And for some reason, she acts like Rosie's the best person she's ever met. I reckon, look, Rosie, you might have to switch to work from home because whenever I see the cat walk up to you at, and, and be excited to see you with zero interactions, it makes me upset you're, you're working from home from now on. Good. Yeah, good. Rosie understands. That's great. Makes me very upset. I, I think that maybe what's really going on is that the cat recognises that Rosie doesn't want to talk to her and so her way of being an absolutely insufferable asshole is like, I'm going to be nice to this bitch. She doesn't want anything to do with me. I'm going to make her sneeze. She's mean to me because I want to talk to her. She's nice to Rosie because she doesn't want to talk to her. That's the type of cat I have. Or I have a sexist cat. She doesn't like men because she also doesn't like my son. But to be fair, she has a lot of reason to not like my son. He is 14. And you know how they are with animals. But I want to get a dog. And I really want a staffy. I want... I, I mean, I live in Frankston. So I'm culturally obliged to have the type of dog where if you go... It'll rip your face off and won't stop. Right? That's the type of dog that I would like to have. But the downside of that dog is dead cats, you know? So I'm thinking that I may actually, for the very first time, uh, get a dog from a breeder, but it makes me feel guilty. But also it's like, oh, if I have, you know, a son who's never had a dog and I got two cats and then I also have employees, maybe I don't want to be adopting some PTSD hound from the pound, you know? Because I've always done that. I mean, you could adopt like a little a little sausage dog, but then you got to walk it and everyone's going to look at you. Like, could you imagine me walking a sausage dog? You know how fucking weird that shit would look? Like we're too, like really, if you think about it, we're actually very similar just on different planes. Like I'm very long vertically. They're very long horizontally. We're very similar in that way. Like if you laid me down and stood the dog up, you, people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> But I really want a staffy. I want the type of dog where, uh, who was it? Nick Cody, the comedian, Australian comedian, had a great joke about staffies. He goes, staffies are the type of dog with, that you can king hit and it will think you're just playing. That's the type of dog I want where you can just like kick it in the head and it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's have fun. That's the type of dog that I want. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think it at least needs to be a puppy so I can train it properly. But who knows? The point is, guys, I'm very excited to be home. And I'm very excited to finally be in an actual good space. You know, uh, the, the first thing that I, that I did with Rosie in the new spot is we went downstairs into my mum's basement. My basement? I own the basement. Went down to the basement and we set up a brand new workspace. And how good does this video look? I mean, it doesn't look that good because we have to use the shit camera because I forgot the camera, which I'm choosing to blame on Rosie. How could you, right? But I did forget the camera, but it's only because I told Rosie not to come in that day. And whose fault is that? Yours. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm in, a, I'm in a space that's like soundproof and it's got carpet and it has really good internet and it has windows and it has power outlets, and it has really great lighting, and it has space, and it has desks, and it has chairs. And I just look at this, and I just think, sucked in, Keelan. Absolutely sucked in. That poor cunt has worked with me for, how long has it been? Four years. Four years. And the very minute I get an actual good workspace. He moves on to Luke and Lewis, which does not have a good workspace. And that was his choice, by the way. He had, uh, he had his choice of jobs. He, he either got to go with Luke and Lewis or with me. And I was going, hey, look, man, 
the good the good shit's coming with me. And I feel like that after four years, he just doesn't believe me. He's like, yeah, all right. I'll believe it when I see it. And then he saw it and he was like, yeah, I don't, still don't believe it. I'm sorry. And fair play to him. You know, he said that the most terribly sad thing I've heard for a while in this workplace, right after uh, he saw this area, he goes, man, this is like the first place I've ever worked that has windows. <laughs> and he's right. That's so fucked. Because Keelan worked at like the radio station is when we, we first got picked up, I think. And that didn't have windows because that was like in the, in the little studio dungeon area. And then he worked with me at the warehouse mainly, the terrible warehouse, if you guys remember that. And that was a tin shed on a concrete slab. And the only thing you could hear was the farts of your neighbors, literally. And then he worked at my old Frankston rental, didn't own the toilet, terrible, in a garage, no windows, cold draft coming under the steel door. The sound of lawnmowers and domestic violence leaking in underneath the underneath the door through the cold brick. And then the poor cunt came to Tasmania and lived with rats. So it's a wonder that the man is still working for me and hasn't filed some kind of uh, uh, lawsuit against me. And how awkward would, would this be if, if this was currently playing in court in two years, you know? Your Honor, Exhibit A, Lewis Spears admitting that his workplaces were not only unsafe but also terrible working conditions. Well, just in case this is being played in court, Your Honor, not guilty. This is satire and performance. Everything I said was a lie and always has been. I've always lied on this show. I've said that from the very start of this episode. This is the world's most inconsistent podcast in terms of views. That's what I said at the start of this episode. I've never told the truth on this episode. Or, or on this podcast, and I never will. So, you know, it's all character. I'm, my name's not even Lewis. I didn't buy a house. I live on the street. This is filmed in front of a green screen. So, I feel like that, unfortunately, now Rosie has absolutely no perspective, and I think that it's time for a bit of perspective to be brought in. You know, you've had it too good for too short, okay? You've had windows and a chair, and internet, and no rain coming in through the roof. You haven't experienced six floods. So I think that from now on, I take it back, you won't be working from home. You'll be working from the backyard. And we'll run some cords out, and every time it rains, uh, well, I'll throw you like a like an umbrella. But it won't work properly. And, and that's, and I feel it just, just to make you feel grateful when you come inside, you know, and yes, you're going to start a union. Well, how, how many of the other employees have signed up? It's just you. You're the only employee. A hundred percent. Fuck. You reckon you can convince Keelan to unionize? Okay. Right. Well, I'm actually, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I've actually been talking to Amazon's union busters and they're really good. They are professionals. They know what they're doing. And uh, look, I don't think you have any chance. So uh, look, <laughs> fine. You can work inside, but the doors have to be open and I will be flooding the room occasionally. Final offer. Okay. Deal. Great. <laughs> Speaking of unsafe working conditions, Travis Scott, um, Straight out there, just uh, I love, I love the idea of Astro World. He was like, "What's the most amount of money I can make with the least amount of money being spent?" And what Astro World has seemed to have been is just a stage, a TV screen behind him, and then a chalk line drawn on the grass that says, "Do not cross." This is for ticket holders only. And then he just crossed his fingers and was like, let's see how much money we can make. And I think they had like, they, they seemed from, from the video and from all of the news articles I've, I've read, they seemed to have one guy who watched a few episodes of Grey's Anatomy and that was the health team. Just one dude who like, oh, yeah, I reckon I can do CPR. I've seen it on Grey's Anatomy. I've seen a few episodes of that show. I've watched House, right? It's never... The, the health condition is never what you expect. It's always the least likely option. 
some guy walked in, he's he's purple, he hasn't breathed for three minutes, and they go, oh, he must be allergic to shellfish that isn't being served here. Walks with a limp, even though he doesn't have one, wants to be Dr. House. That seems to be who was running Astro World. is a guy who thought he was Dr. House, and he's watched three episodes of Grey's Anatomy, and was like, don't worry, I've got this shit. And he was also security too. <laughs> I don't know what to think about this Astro World stuff, man. I think that a lot of people are going, oh, it's not Travis Scott's fault. He was on stage. He couldn't hear anything. And that's true, right? I, you know, I'm a performer. I know how it is. You can't hear anything, right? And all these, there are all these videos of people chanting, stop the show, stop the show. I actually doubt that he probably couldn't hear them because not only is he, he was in an elevated position, there's lights in his face, so he definitely wouldn't be able to see anything really not even maybe the front row i don't know i don't know how powerful the lights would have to be to light up something outside at night time but you could almost guarantee that he couldn't see shit um so vision's out i i kind of doubt that he would be able to hear chanting um because he's got an earpiece in there's music going on i don't know i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt there i don't think he would know too much about what's going on but uh, the blame more lies with him as an organizer, right? It's his festival, so he organized this shit. He would have made a lot of the decisions surrounding the festival, uh, and uh, it was unsafe. Like, there wasn't enough security. People are going, oh, it's not Travis's fault. There wasn't enough security. There wasn't enough health officials. There wasn't enough fences. They didn't make sure that the event didn't get overrun. And it's like, yeah, that's all his fault. He organized the festival. If I put on a show... And I just organize, I know there's going to be 50,000 people and then 20,000 people trying to break in because I encourage this every time I tweet about my shows. Like, yeah, let's break in. This is going to be sick. If I know that's just going to happen, I'm going to, I'm going to hire security. I'm going to make sure there's enough fencing. I'm going to make sure there's enough health officials because it's my fucking event. And if something goes wrong, it's my fucking event, right? So I think that the blame lies not with Travis as a performer because I think that if he was, if it was like not his festival, I would go, look, this is bad that it happened, but it's not his fault. It's the festival's fault. But the thing is, he was performing at a festival that he organized. It's his fault. Um, and not entirely, you know, the police are to blame and all this kind of stuff and, and the security is to blame, but also like he's the one that organized the security. He's the one who would have made the decision on how much money should we spend on this and that. And it, to me, it just seems like such an American thing of like how much money can we print uh, and someone's gone, oh, what about, uh, what about people's safety? And they've gone, ah, sure, you should be all right, you know? Which is, actually, that's quite Australian, you know? It's like just uh, just, or, just organizing fucking nothing. You know, that was our vaccine rollout, wasn't it? It's like, ah, we'll be all right. We should, we, we should be fine. There's no need to, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. There's no need to organize anything. We'll, we'll be sweet. Two years later, I live in Tasmania. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think that, I reckon he'll probably do... Some jail time, maybe. I don't know. He's going to lose a lot of money. There's so so Travis Scott personally has been hit with a seven hundred and fifty million dollar lawsuit, but there's also a class action that names Travis and Drake and Apple Music and Live Nation and a stadium and like every company involved with Astro World, and that amount of money adds up to two billion dollars. So. Look, they're not going to get two billion. They're not going to get seven hundred fifty million. But if they even get like half that, if they get even twenty percent of that, what's twenty percent of two billion? That's like four hundred million dollars. If they get fucking, sorry, two hundred million. I have a small brain. That's an insane amount of money. If they get even, oh no, that's that's ten percent. If they get ten percent of it, that's two hundred million dollars. So. I think that uh, he's getting into a lot of trouble and he might do jail time just because he has two previous criminal charges that he pled guilty to uh, in terms of inciting riots and promoting unsafe environments at, at music festivals. So I think that the guy is fucked uh, monetarily and probably legal wise, although he does have money. And so that means you can kind of do whatever you want uh, when it comes to a court of law. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, and maybe he should, you know, maybe he should. It is, uh, it's a very sad thing. Man, I read that some fucking, I, the kid was nine years old, ended up dying. That's terrible. Nine or 10 years old. That was like the, the last most recent person who's died. It's 10 people now, but then there's like hundreds and hundreds of injuries and trauma and broken bones and all this kind of shit that are joining this class action lawsuit. I mean, 
dude, let's be honest. If I was Travis, if I was a Travis Scott fan, I would I would be joining that class action. I'd be like, yeah, even if even if I was like right out the back, I couldn't see shit. I go, yeah, I was front row. I had hearing damage. My ears hurt. You know, you get it. You get a grand, surely. I would be joining that. Imagine if all 50,000 people joined it. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah my, my knees hurt. We were standing too long. Like that, that would be me. I would show up. I would show up, dude. If I was all the way up the back, you know, just hanging out at the food truck, I would be showing up to court wearing like a full body cast in a wheelchair, talking with the text to speech machine like Bill Gates going, I had a hot dog. It made me sick. And then I was trampled by the, uh, the people replacing the water in the porta potties. I will never recover. And I would just try and get whatever I could. And, you know, I would spend some of the money on Travis Scott merch. I'd give back a little bit. You know, I'd do what I can. I'd buy, I'd buy a Kylie Jenner lip kit because, you know, she's going to have to open up her purse. That's an awkward conversation, isn't it? Two rich people hanging out in a room, one much richer than the other, going, ah, I need a bit of money. I do love that Kylie Jenner's getting cancelled because she filmed an ambulance on her Instagram story, which is such like, I said it in my video that I put out, it's such like privileged, privileged rich person shit of like, like sitting behind, sitting in the VIP section behind like metal gates while everyone else is getting literally stood on and then filming an ambulance and going, oh, look how much fun we're having. While someone's in there like stroking out, people are dancing on top of the ambulance. She's like, oh, well, this is this is good content for my Instagram. <laughs> That's crazy. I love, man, you gotta you gotta give it up to Travis for his apology video. Why was he rubbing his forehead that much? That's what gets me about it. The two things about the apology, sure, bad apology. I don't think there is such thing as a good apology, right? When you when you you know inadvertently kill ten people, what do you go? Yeah, sorry. Whoops. Maybe that's what I would do. If, if you guys come to my show and, and for whatever reason, 10 people just died at my show, I don't think I would apologize. I reckon what I would put on my Instagram story is, is and I, w- I, would, I would add a filter. You know, I wouldn't go with black and white. I, I would go with, um, I'd probably go with like that, uh, that Pixar filter, the one that makes you look like a cartoon character. I go with that because I feel like, even as sad as it is, apologizing with the Pixar filter is a little bit funny, you know? And it's not like I didn't apologize. And also I feel like it's hard to get angry at someone who looks that cute, you know? It's hard to stay mad at a Pixar character. Like really, if you really, really think about it, if Adolf Hitler looked like a Pixar character, would we really be that upset? He probably would have won World War II with no conflict. We would have just gone, ah, look, lovable little scamp. Yeah, yeah, come in. That's what that's what everybody everybody would have done. Russia would have been like, yeah, come on, come on in. Do you need a coat? It's a bit cold, isn't it? That's what would happen, right? So I would do that. I would put on the Pixar filter and then I would just, uh, this would be my Instagram story. I would, I would pick up my phone, I'd start recording and I would go, oops, and that would be it. And I feel like that, w- I feel like everything would just blow over. I would just go, oops, wearing the Pixar filter and everyone, everyone would be so confused and so upset that that was my apology, that people would be angrier about the lack of quality and sincerity in my apology than they would be with the fact that I kind of killed 10 cunts. And I really feel like that's how you respond to something like this. Putting on a black and white filter, annoying, right? I don't know why he did that. No filter. If you want to do a good apology, you got to go no filter, right? And why was he rubbing his forehead that much? Dude, he was, that, that apology was like, that's what you do when you're trying to convince mum that you're sick. You rub your forehead so it heats up. I've got a fever. I need to stay home and play Fortnite. Then you find out that, you, that Travis Scott's skin has been banned from Fortnite. You're like, fuck. What am I going to do with my weekend? My long weekend. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what happens to Travis. I reckon he, I think he's going to, it's, he's going to lose a lot of fucking money. I think that, I think the, 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 uh, those days of doing like collaborations with every mainstream brand on earth are done at least for a couple of years. Uh, and I think that I, but I also think that the next Astro World, 
the next Astro World, and there will be one, is going to be fucking huge. It's going to be absolutely massive. I think that there will be another Astro World, and I think that it's going to be even bigger. I mean, there's going to be more security, but I think that when he does come back, and he will, I think that the festival that that last time it happened, people died, is such a fucking taboo and such a big controversial thing that every teenager, every young adult on earth is going to go, I want to go to the festival where people died. I reckon that will happen. I don't think this deters people from... It will deter, like, you know, like a boring person like me. I'd be like, I don't want to go to Astro World, but I would never go to a fucking festival. Music festivals in general are shithouse. It's time to admit that, guys. Music festivals aren't fun. Ecstasy is. Can we admit that? There's no such like if you if you were to going to going to a music festival, right? All you're really doing is like standing in the sun. You can't see shit. And if you do want to see shit, you're going to be crushed to death and groped. If you're there with a girl, you got to you got to be fucking turning around every every thirty seconds to go. Hey, can you please stop sexually assaulting my girlfriend, please? Which is just boring, right? And you have to do it, but it's more of a chore, you know. Like I don't want to clean my toilet, but someone's going to do it. If if no one else does it, disgusting things happen. I remember I went to a music festival once with Jazz. It was we wanted to see Red Hot Chili Peppers, her favorite band. And we weren't even close. We just got, we got there. We were like, we were like maybe, I don't know, a hundred meters back. And it was just the fucking worst experience ever. We were still like squashed. It was hot as fuck. We couldn't see anything. I felt like, especially me, I'm six, eight. I feel like the rudest guy ever at every type of concert that I go to. Like, I love being backstage now because I am no longer worried about getting punched in the back of the head for blocking the view of, let's be honest, everyone behind me. I have to stand at the at the very, very back of every concert or I just am rude. You know, once at a Cursor show, I stood at the front row, right at the front. This is before I knew him as a fan. One of the very first shows I ever went to, I was 18 years old. I stood right at the front and six people asked me very politely to move over, move over, move over. Six different people. And eventually I ended up still at the front, but right at the very corner, couldn't see shit. And I chose to do that because I was terrified that if I said no, I would be, and rightly so, punched in the back of my massively high head. One time, yeah, I went to this music festival with with my girl and one of her friends, and one of her friends was like the opposite of me. She was like 5'2". And I'm like, why the fuck are you here? Why would you go to any, any concert ever? Like, as a joke, I decided to lean down and put my head at her level just to see what she could see, and all I could see was back. Just back. Just like a sea of backs, and also can't hear shit because my ears were like low. So the music was just going straight over the top of everyone, not making it into the backs. And all I was like, oh, this isn't a music festival. This is a back festival, and I smell sweat. All I can smell is ecstasy leaking out of people's ass cracks. It was very bad. So then I lift her up so she can see what I can see, and she goes, oh, this is amazing. And then someone goes, can you please put her down? I can't see. I'm like, there you go. That's my reality. I have a great view and a terrible time. You have a terrible view and an even worse time. Not good. The only thing that's good about being a girl who's five foot two at a music festival is you get to be on someone's shoulders, right? But then you have to rub your pussy on the back of someone's neck, which is, I feel like, very intimate, you know? Because I've done that before. Someone's I've been, I've been at a concert when I was single. Girl go, can I go on your shoulders? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no worries. Pick her up, put her on my shoulders, great. Now I'm having a terrible time and my neck is warm. Which is, which is far too intimate. Very personal. To just feel the warmth of a stranger's pussy on the back of your neck. It's not, it's like, it's, I, it's nice. 
but it's very intimate. It's much more than a handshake, isn't it? You know? It's not good. <laughs> that happened when I was 18. And I was like, oh, they're different temperatures. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's like a little space heater down there. How convenient that must be when it's cold. Pocket to keep your hands in. Not both of them. That's a bit much. <laughs> Look, I what I think should happen is I love that there's been two like live show controversies this year. The first one is Travis Scott, uh, and that's terrible. The second one is much better, and that's uh, Brass Against. Have you guys seen this? The Brass Metal Cover Band female lead singer at like some music festival pulls her pants down and pisses on the face of like a fan who got on stage. I think that's, that is the most metal shit ever. I mean, it probably tasted like metal, you know, that's, I think if you haven't seen that viral clip, I will say there's a lot of spray, you know, because that's one thing that that men have that women don't is we have it we have we can aim, we have a we have a steady one point of stream. You ever see a woman piss? It's a waterfall. That shit is like that shit looks like a waterfall uh, while an earthquake's happening. It's like it's a lot. It's high pressure. It's messy. It's more of a spray. Men, we have a sniper. You know, women have not even a machine gun, it's more of, a, more of a nuke, you know? Like if you took a hose and set it to the sprinkler setting and then, and then sprayed it through a sieve, that's what women have. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I will say that if you're trying to aim, it makes it more difficult. And that's what we saw at the Brass Against show. Um, this guy gets on stage and this woman... The lead singer of the show, she pulls her pants down. He is a willing participant, by the way, which is very strange. And she just blasts the guy for a good 15 seconds. Like she must have really needed to go. Like me personally, I could never get in that situation because the, f the last thing that I do before getting on stage is I use the bathroom. I've had many close calls where I've had to run out of the bathroom on stage with my fly down. I've talked about this on a previous... That happened at my Brisbane show. I ran on stage doing my fly-up because I got introduced midway. So I will, I, ne I will never have that, like, locked and loaded, ready to go. It makes me wonder if... Was this just, like, a beautiful coincidence? Or has she secretly wanted to do this every show and she, like, doesn't pee before her show every, every time? Like, man, one day... Some crazy lunatic is going to get on stage, lie on the floor and go piss in my mouth and I'll be ready. That's seizing life by the bladder. Good on her. I reckon she's a, she's a queen. Now, I actually have uh, on my laptop here, I have the actual video. I have the context because I feel like everyone's seen the actual video where she pisses on the guy, right? But I found on Twitter... Uh, the context, uh, that's great. I literally just tried to click on the tab and I closed it. That makes me so angry. That makes me so upset. It took me so long to find that video. And as I went to click on it, I just closed the tab. And what would have been a really good, insightful moment of the show has turned to me raging. Okay, I found it again. Don't worry, guys. False alarm. All right. All good. No worries. So this is the context uh, of this video. So this is, I think this is before piss. Because what I want to know is like, how did the guy end up on stage? And then how did they get to, all right, I'm going to piss on your face. Like did this, did this guy not get off stage? Did he go, did he run up and go very, and very politely, excuse me, Mrs. Brass again, could you please piss in my mouth? What, like how did this happen? Did she go, hey guys, I really would like to wee. I don't want to use the bathroom. Would anyone like their face pissed on? Let's find out. Okay, so she's on stage and she's going, when you have to pee and you can't do shit about it, what am I going to do? Pee right here? And a very distinctly male cheer comes out. 
you know, because this is a music festival, it, pretty even split generally. But but this cheer that you hear right here, very male cheer. A lot of women were like, I, I feel like you should use a bathroom. Men were like, yeah, piss. Which, you know, I'm not, I'm not condemning. I would be cheering right along with them. And who's going to clean it up, huh? Who's going to drink it? Okay, this this is definitely, okay, becoming very clear that the joke I was telling about her secretly wanting to piss on fans is becoming a reality. This, oh, my God. Who's going to drink it? And, and no cheer comes out. A very, a very distinct lack of cheering happens. Someone hands her a towel. She goes, this isn't a mouth. Oh, my God. She planned this shit. I have a fantasy where I pee in someone's mouth. Okay. So she's going, I have a fantasy where I pee in someone's mouth. And I guess she wants to do this on stage. I have a fantasy of peeing in someone's mouth and it's not because I'm into some freaky shit. I'm not into weird stuff. Uh, bitch, you pissed on in someone's mouth on stage. You've, you, yeah, you know what? I agree. Yeah, that's not freaky. That is fucked. That's fucky is what that is. I love that. She's making it sound like a favor, you know? Like, I don't want to leave you guys. I'm having so much fun performing that I have to. I must for you. This is good. This is classic manipulation. I would, I would love to do this. Like I get halfway through my set and I go, guys, because you have been such a good audience tonight and I've had so much fun and I'm really enjoying tonight's show and I just don't want to end it. I have decided for you as a gift to shit in one of your mouths for you because I don't want to end the show and you don't want it to end, do you either? You know, this is classic manipulation. And I've done this before. That was that was the Perth show. That's why I need a volunteer. That's why I need a volunteer. Okay. Oh my god. I th dude, I thought that this was like a belligerent guy that got on stage. I this is how I thought it would have happened. And I can actually see this happening. This is less crazy. Really drunk guy storms the stage. Is being a fucking idiot, won't get off stage. And then she goes, if you don't get off stage, I'm going to piss in your face. And then he lies down. It's like, yeah, do it. I can see that happening. That like, that's crazy, but it kind of makes sense. This chick is asking for volunteers. Can I take my pants off and pee in this motherfucker's life mouth right now? She asks her, oh, I love this, she asks her band, she goes, can I do that? Is that okay? And then just turns around, doesn't wait for an answer. Classic. This is great. Is that okay? Can I get some clear and affirmative consent? And the band members are like, uh, and then she just keeps going. She's like, great, that's good enough for me. This is really good stuff. I'm going to pee in his mouth. Hold on, not yet. First... I'm going to do it after this song. That is so fucking funny. I had no idea that I thought it was like a spur of the moment thing. Like shit just got out of hand. Because what the band wrote on the Instagram is they go, hey, thanks so much, Rockville. We had a great time. Sophia got carried away. That's a little bit more than fucking carried away. That's like smashing six bottles of water before the performance and going, yeah, tonight's the night I do it. I've been thinking about this for too long. I'm going to live my life. You know what? That's, that's so funny. I really like that. What does this woman look like? Sophia, brass against. Because you can't really see. It's a very, very pixelated video. I, I want to see, has she like said anything? Here's her Twitter. Um, oh, here we go. Hey, everyone. I want to speak to my performance at Rockville Metal Festival in Daytona. I have always pushed the limits in music, and on stage that night, I pushed the limits too far. I love my family. Hey, Sophia, don't bring them into it. They don't need to be brought into this. 
that no one was going, no one was going, hey, what does your mum think about it? No one was going, oh, how could you do this to your family? They don't need to be brought into this, you know? I love my family, the band, and the fans more than anything I know. More than anything. And I know that some were hurt or offended by what I did. I apologize to them and I want them to know that I didn't mean to hurt them. I am not a shock artist. Well, you are now. I always want to put the music first. I'm grateful for all of your continued love and support. I love that. Like, I am not a shock artist. And then she's standing on stage. I have a fantasy where I pee in someone's mouth. Not a shock artist. And the top reply, which has almost as many likes as her apology, is just piss raining into this guy's mouth. What a queen. That is fucking hilarious. Uh, I And this is a good comment. I don't mean to be that guy, but men do shit like this all the time and hardly anyone says a thing. Can't, I, I've never in my life even heard of someone pissing in the mouth of someone while they perform. I've never heard of that. In fact, I'm going to Google that. I'm sure it has happened, but I don't think I'm going to get stacks of results. Man pisses in mouth during performance. I'm going to find some terrible stuff. Okay, the only thing that's uh, that's coming up is uh, uh, disgusting porn videos. Okay, I regret Googling this. And then the brass against one. Singer gets a blowjob on stage. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Still not piss. I think that's less crazy. That's crazy, but I feel like that's less crazy than pissing in someone's face. Uh, here's a good one. Fan pisses into his own mouth at gig. Crazy, but also more of a party trick. Also not the band, you know? Like that's a fun, disgusting party trick that would get you uninvited to every future event, but would be talked about very fondly for years. Yeah. I'm not finding a lot of any results other than disgusting fetish porn, so I'm going to close that tab. Um, Look, what I think is Sophia's a queen and she's living a dream, you know? Now that she's done that, I wonder what her next fantasy is. I uh, I've got to catch. A sh- I have to catch a show. See, I take it back. That is one. That's one band I would be in the front row for. You know, although you don't want to get splashed back. That was perhaps the worst thing that the guy did. Was the guy that got pissed on is like, not only did he get pissed on, that's crazy, right? But you know, everyone loves a bit of attention. You know, everyone likes being center stage. Everyone everyone likes being looked at. I want his statement. That's what I, that's, man, that is what I want to see. I want his statement. Like I want, I want, yeah, look, I'm really sorry to anyone that I hurt or offended, but, you know, I thought it was going to taste better. I was wrong. Uh, That's what I want to see from this dude. I feel like the worst thing about this whole thing, if you watch the video, is the part right at the end where he stands up and he's like, yeah, and no one's really like, yeah, dude, you're a legend. Like, I don't know what he was expecting. Yeah, and people were like, yes. And they all start licking him or something. I don't know what what he expected. But the worst part, but also the funniest part, is that he bends down and scoops up a bunch of her piss in his hands and then throws it at the front row. That's hilarious. I can just picture people crying, like, like girls just crying, going, no, just getting covered in piss. That's really great. <clears throat> and then she goes, security, get him out of here. Like like he didn't do exactly what you wanted him to do. He was, all right, security, get him out of here. How about security, get him a beer? How about security, make sure he has a free T-shirt? How about security, take him backstage, he's part of the band, he's the opening act. And every single night on tour, it starts with him getting pissed on. I think make him part of the band. He can play the triangle. That's kind of a brass instrument. You know what she really should have done? What she should have done, and this would greatly increase her accuracy, she should have grabbed a trombone from her bandmate and pissed into the fat end of it and then tipped it around, applied the mouthpiece to the guy, and then either... No, okay. What she Here's what she should have done. This would be great. And I feel like this is how they start the next concert. She comes out... With a trombone, she pisses into it. She keeps her thumb over the mouthpiece so that it stays in there. 
And then she has six bottles of water. They bring out the next brass instrument. She fills it with piss. Six more bottles of water. This takes 40 minutes. There's eight people in this band. Every single brass instrument is full of Sophia's piss. And then the very first song, that very first fucking note that just gets blasted through the instrument, guess what? Waterworks show. There's no pyrotechnics. There's just piss technics. And they just they just blast piss through their instruments as they play. That just increased their ticket price by $10. You're welcome. That's a business idea. And that's where I'm going to end this episode, guys, with a great business idea. If you want to see me live, I'm going to be in Adelaide on December 9th. Uh, I will not be pissing on anyone in the front row. Uh, but if you are a urinal at backstage, brace yourself because I will use that a lot. I do not like ha- having any pee in me before I step on stage. This is a well-known fact about me. All right. So come see me, loosebeers.com. Also, the Loogies have been moved from Adelaide to Melbourne. Uh, they're on sale now as well uh, at lukeandlewis5.com. They're going to be great. And uh, Adelaide is my last show on the whole tour. I want to see you there. I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to end it. Uh, and uh, I'm excited for next year, man. I'm in my new studio. I'm in the, in the new spot. Uh, we're looking at hiring a bunch more people for the team uh, as well over the coming months. So uh, I'm excited, man. I'm, we're going to make some really, really cool stuff. Uh, we're going to finish the year probably just with the green screen videos and making some cool stuff. And the videos will look better. They'll probably be edited better. We'll have a lot more time to actually make them and put them out. There'll be more content coming. I appreciate your patience with all the craziness, but you know how it is. It's COVID. It's all that. Um, and anyone who has a vinyl record, those have been sent to me this week, finally. So they'll be sent out to you next week. And uh, everyone in Australia should hopefully have them in the next two weeks. Everyone internationally will have them, you know, three, four weeks, depending on the shipping uh, from uh when I get them. So, but I'll keep posting about that. You'll get an email as well when your stuff's been shipped out with tracking and all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll see you at a show and uh, you won't be pissed on. Thank you very much. See you later. Have a shit one. Yeah, have a, have a little break and then we'll do the Patreon version.